that's consistent with everything Sir John Kerr said in um, his book and in the past. Um, he always wanted those letters to be released. He thought the letters would vindicate his position. Uh, so all it does is blows away all the silly conspiracy theories that we've been having for an awfully long time, uh, which said that, you know, this was all the conspiracy of the British and the establishment and the Queen, etc. Well, look, it wasn't. We just have to live with the fact that it was an Australian who dismissed an Australian government under our current constitutional system. What about the idea that John Kerr acted first before he indeed could be sacked by Gough Whitlam? Um, that quote, he could not risk the outcome for the sake of the monarchy. Yeah, I think what's really interesting in the documents is how early that concern arose. Um, goes back to some documents in September. Uh, and what's interesting is there's a little line in there where he um, says that um, he'd been tipped off that the government was you know, it looked like the government was looking into this at that time, and that's what caused him to be concerned. And there was even some article in the Herald about it, uh, and he thought that the PM's office had been leaking it. Uh, so he'd obviously been stirred up quite early on in the piece um, about that particular aspect of it. So he was quite conscious about it the whole way through. What are the constitutional implications here? Uh, well, not huge. Um, they really just tell us the constitutional si situation as it is. Um, and I think the one really interesting thing in the in the letters, which I don't think has ever come out before, is about Gough Whitlam's le um, phone call to the Queen's private secretary at 4.15 in the morning in Brit British time. Uh, it's never been admitted what Whitlam said in that conversation before. And I think I, I, I've been trying to check it down, but I think he actually even denied making it. But anyway... In relation to that particular phone call, according to the Queen's private secretary, Whitlam explained that he'd been dismissed, um, that there'd been a vote of confidence um, in, in his favour in the House of Representatives, that supply had been passed, and, and this is the key thing, he said that he should now be reinstated. So instead of the British interfering in Australia's constitutional system, seems that off Whitlam was rather hoping the British would interfere <laughs> into the system by making him Prime Minister again. Now, the letter also says that he didn't instruct um, uh, the Queen's private secretary to ask the Queen to reinstate him. Instead, he wanted the Queen's private secretary to speak to the Governor-General to have him reinstated. Well, that's exactly where the power lay under the constitution to do that. So Gough knew that the Queen couldn't reinstate him, but he did want Sir Martin Charteris to talk to the Governor General, presumably with a view to getting himself reinstated. So there you go. If there's any interference from the British, which in fact didn't happen, um, it was Gough that was wanting it. We just heard from Anthony Albanese, who was uh, talking about now the need for Australia to have a head of state. Do you think that the release of these letters will bring about any discussion between monarchists and Republicans in Australia again? Uh, well, it certainly sparked a lot of interest in it. Uh, probably the lack of some spectacular conspiracy hasn't really helped in that regard, although no doubt people will try and manufacture one anyway. I have to say the most amusing thing about the press conference, though, was um, how strong Labor was about the need to support um, the release of these letters, because when I actually wrote to a Labor minister many years ago, um, in fact, I wrote to Nicola Roxham when she was Attorney General asking for the letters to be released because the reason given for not releasing them was completely ludicrous, that they were private letters, letter got passed on to Tony Burke, who was the minister, who wrote back to me and said, no, can't release them. They're private confidential letters. You can't have them. So Labor's certainly changed its tune in the last little while.